Today, we're going to talk about the hematoxin and is in international stain for paraffin wax sections. But before I actually start, I'd like you to introduce you, because it's your first time with uh, a staining set, to the various elements. First of all, we have an agent called a de-waxing agent. This will actually be your first port of call. Your slide will go into this particular bath for de-waxing for a period of 10 minutes. We then, behind these, we have a series of alcohols. Now, it is essential because we are going to be using an aqueous stain that we actually hydrate the specimen. And so, therefore, we're going to go through a series of alcohols 100% and we're going to do two baths of that at two minutes between each um, incubation. We're then going to go into 95% alcohol again for two two minute intervals of incubation. We're then going to go into 70% um, alcohol for between one and two minutes. You then finally take the section uh, to water. This old process is described as taking sections to, to water. Uh, and in many of the methods that you're going to use, you will actually find that this expression is actually used as the point one in the staining procedure. We are now um, going to be in a position to start uh, our first stain. This is the um, hematoxin stain. Um, it's a generic uh, version uh, published by Mayers and it is in fact an alum hematoxlin. There are several types of hematoxlins uh, that you will use during the course of your time in this laboratory. The alum hematoxlin is the most commonly used um, for uh, the H&E method in this country. You will also use an iron-based hematoxlin uh, at a later point when you are using acid stains in trichrome experiments. The complementary stain to go with the hematoxylin is the eosin. This is a cytoplasmic stain and this will stain um, the muscle and the um, connective tissue, erythrocytes, etc. Hematoxylin is essentially a basic stain and a nuclear stain and will actually stain the nuclei of your cells uh, and um, it is, is an extremely useful um, stain, particularly in pathology, because if there is any um, um, cancerous um, activity within the tissue, because it's very basophilic, those cancerous cells will show up as a deep blue. Um, and the next um, step, step that I need to introduce you to is, in fact, the two processes which are called differentiation. Following staining with the hematoxylin, which we actually overstain, is called um, progressively staining, and what we are going to do is we're going to uh, stain for six minutes, and then we're going to then differentiate. This will actually remove any excess um, stain from the tissue. Now, hematoxylin, hematoxylin, mares hemalum, in fact, um, is a stain which will actually um, stain at acid pH, but at alkali pH, it, it will actually bind to the tissue. Um, and so, therefore, it's essential uh, to adjust the pH of the um, hematoxylin by an adjustment with an alkali solution. Today, we actually use, uh, in this laboratory, a solution called Scott's Tap Water. 
it literally um, is an alkali um, tap water um, that uh, was um, uh, not developed by a person called Scott, uh, but in fact it actually simulates uh, the the northern uh, uh, types types of, of, of water, which is, have got very rich aluminium uh, and uh, other alkalis uh, within them, and so it will actually um, gently blue um, uh, by a change of pH um, the uh, this the, the emetoxylin dye. So that is Scott's tap water, and you'll see that in action in a while. Um, the only other step which I need to introduce you to is the 95% um, alcohol rinse. Now, the 95% alcohol rinse is also important. Following the staining with the eosin, if water is, is actually placed in contact with the slide after that point, eosin does not bind in aqueous uh, solutions. And so, therefore, there's two uh, opportunities. You can either use, uh, and some methods suggest this, a um, concentration of uh, a few drops of, of acetic acid into uh, some water, but we prefer in this laboratory to actually reduce the amount of, of water uh, by actually simply using a 95% uh, alcohol. This works very, very well and allows us then to go directly um, up the alcohols from 95% into the next uh, phase. This phase, um, after this rinse, is, is called um, dehydration. Because if you remember, in the first instance, we um, were taking our, our, our sections down to water to hydrate it, and at this point, we are now uh, going to, going to um, remove the water. Why are we going to do this? Well, it's quite simple. Um, the clearing agent and water are totally immiscible. And um, it's one of the essential elements during this process to actually remove all the water you can during those four um, final steps of 2%, 95% alcohol, um, um, uh, and two, two stages of 100% um, alcohol. At that point, we then go into the clearing agent, and that does precisely what we need to um, do. We are literally clearing away the last remnants of alcohol and also uh, water. And so at the point where you mount your section, we are literally um, in a position where there is no water present in the section. Um, if you think about um, viewing uh, the, um, the universe uh, by um, um, a telescope, a lot of the things we can't see, mainly because of water and cloud. Well, it's the same sort of situation when we're working uh, under a microscope. If you actually have got water present, the tissues will, will, will um, take up a, an opacity uh, and um, you will not be able to see the final structure. So we are totally water-free. And then this resinous mounting media, which has got a um, refractive index, very close to glass will mean that by the time we've made, mounted our sandwich between uh, our slide, uh, our tissue, and then a cover slip on top, which is the next element, um, a little, little square cover slips will be the final step that we will actually seal uh, our slide into position. Um, and that will then, when dry, produce a permanent sealed mount.